Hello and welcome to this edition of the EV Revolution Show, my Tesla Timeout series. Thank you very much for taking the time to join me. Now I've got a couple of things today, a couple of quick product reviews coming up right after this. And then I'm going to tell you about my long range, uh, my first long road trip that I have took in my long range Model 3. So here's a couple of quick product reviews first. So Timeout, I've got a couple more things sent to me by my friends at Evanex or EV Annex in Florida, depending on how you pronounce it. Anyway is right. Um, thank you, the, the guys, for sending me a couple things here, some more accessories to put on promotion. So I appreciate that. So let me show you what I have today. So what I have today is a uh, set of four of these door liners, I believe they're called. I'll put the description and the uh, link into the show notes here. And as you can see, they're basically just sculpted liners, kind of like WeatherTech, you know, but for the interior doors of your Model 3, and I believe that for Model Y as well, they sell these. But again, I'll have the link in the show notes. And they basically just fit into the existing door cavity of the Model 3. And um, they should just go right in. So let me just see if this one, if I have the right one here, because they're not labeled. So I'm just taking a guess that this is the right one. And yes, it's the right one. So yeah, they just go in nice and stung to the door here and they fit and they just help protect the, uh, the liner. You know, we put drinking, uh, you know, slushy and coffee and containers and things like that. So if anything spills or bottles of water or whatever, it's in there nice and uh, tightly and uh, keep help to keep things from sliding around. So pretty cool. They, uh, there's four of them that come in the box for all the different doors for the front and the back and uh, easy to install. So a great little cool item for you. All right, and another item that they sent me is this um, trunk cargo net and it's uh, one size fits all the models. You can see here you've got a chart that's for model S, X, 3, and Y, and different mounting points. So you have these uh, anchors that you just use the screws to tap in, or you can use double-sided tape anchors, whichever you want. Easily screws into the, the felt carpet with the backing, a hardboard backing. You can drill pilot holes. So there's nice instructions. There's also an installation video, and then again, the measurements are here to show you what, um, what it looks like from the measurements. And then that's the cargo net there. So um, I use the trunk a lot for carrying things and, and even groceries and stuff. And then things will slide around a lot. So this will help section the trunk off to keep the more common items that I put in there, you know, stuff for work, laptop bag, that kind of stuff from a slide all the way to the back of the trunk. So let me put it in and see what it looks like when I'm done. All right, so I have the net installed. I just, again, you can follow the instructions or basically mount this wherever you want. And if I need to move this for some reason, I'm a little closer to the back of the trunk or a little farther in, it's about the middle portion of the, the trunk, I guess, which is good because most of the stuff that I put, I put into this section and it doesn't slide back. So that's good, but uh, it's nice and anchored there. And if for some reason they come loose, I can just reposition spots and use the double-sided tape to further anchor it if I wish. So thanks, Evianix. Also has a nice handy pouch, so you can put other things in here, uh, which I may do. Right now I've got these things here, and then underneath here I have um, I have some stuff as well. So um, right now, everything works good. So thanks, Evanex. Appreciate it. All right, welcome back. And again, my big thanks to um, Evanex uh, down in Florida for sending me that stuff. It's always very useful, this stuff they send me. I use everything. It's uh, really, really nice. Now, the last part of this episode today is just to quickly talk about my trip that I took in my Model 3 recently. Um, I don't have any running video to show you, you know, fast forwarding me driving down the road, which is boring and all this kind of stuff. So I'm, I want to really focus on how the, the vehicle performed from a range and from a charging perspective. Uh, we know the Model 3 Long Range is a very capable vehicle. This was my first long road trip. Here's the route that we did. We were driving from just outside uh, northwest of the Toronto area in Ontario, Canada, through to through the province of Quebec and into the province of New Brunswick, where we went to Fredericton, New Brunswick, to stay with family for about a week-long vacation. Everybody's safe. We're all in the bubbles. We're all double vaccinated, all that stuff. So we weren't concerned about safety, even though, you know, and in New Brunswick, they have a much, a little bit more relaxed state uh, uh presence over there when it comes to COVID. So this was a great opportunity to see some family that we hadn't seen for a long time. So that's the route. And you can see highlighted on the road is all most of the main Tesla superchargers that are available to do that trip. Tesla has a coast to coast supercharger network available for the Model 3. 
Now, here's a few pictures of some of the things that uh, that we saw in uh, New Brunswick. Of course, the Bay of Fundy had to take the car down there. And I also met up with a, an electric vehicle society of New Brunswick, a group of people from that outfit. Uh, we got together and talked about EVs, and they were happy to see somebody from Ontario. Uh, so that was really nice, and I thanked them for meeting up with me and having a great conversation. Uh, and also, again, it was just nice to spend some time and travel. There's also a picture of uh, the hotel that we stopped at that had a level two charger that we stayed overnight. So my plan for this trip was to not book it, boot it all in one shot. It's almost 1,500 kilometers one way, and that was way too many hours to try to do in one shot. So we, we drove to just west of Quebec City, stayed overnight, and continued the rest of the journey there. So here's the eye chart now that's coming up. This is the log that I've kept for the supercharging um journey and i'm not going to explain all the numbers on here because it's a lot you can pause the video and look it over as much as you want i'm just going to focus on a couple things i'm going to focus on the time that i spent charging my average charging stop for supercharger was about 15 to 25 minutes that's my average stop i was figuring about 20 minutes would be average and most of them were now there were a couple of hiccups even tesla supercharger network is not perfect and I did find that there was a problem with one of the superchargers in Cornwall, Cornwall, Ontario, where everything was limited to below 50 kilowatt. I don't know why, but as soon as we plugged in, we got a warning that's saying that you're charging below slow and it was full. There was eight stalls. It was all full. So we needed a good hour to get back to where we were to continue to the next leg or the next point that I wanted to. But that worked out OK because it was time for late lunch, early dinner, because we had been driving dri driving for a while, so we got had some time to eat, and it all worked out. In fact, when I got back to that spot, there was a queue, <laughs> probably about eight or ten Teslas waiting to get in into the other eight, into the stalls, because it was still fully booked. So that was a problematic stop uh, there. So it took us a little longer that first day to get to the hotel than normally would have happened because of that, and because of some of my misplanning and where I was going to stop. I had manually planned the route and I stopped early and I didn't need to. So it kind of threw everything off a little bit as far as where we could go. And then the next day, uh, I, I the hotel we stayed at, we charged to 100% so we could go in two charging stops right to New Brunswick. And they were, again, very minimal charging stops. They didn't take that long. So I'm at a Tesla supercharger here in Fredericton area. I'll be using this for a couple of days for my uh, stay here in Fredericton uh, for the week. So I'll be coming back and forth. Home charging is uh, fairly slow, but I'll use it. But one thing I like about the Tesla superchargers is that there are other companies that uh, tail on that because this particular Irving gas station, the super gas station, has a big truck stop, has, as you can see, a charge network from uh, via the province, I believe, Energy in New Brunswick, and it has both Chatham CCS for non-Tesla vehicles and also a level two if you're going to sit here for a while park overnight or something like that so I like it that when they combine various methods of charging for not only Teslas but for other vehicles so that you can get a quick charge or if you're in the area and uh, crashing for a little bit you could get an overnight charge here so good idea and I'm glad to see it on the way back, what I did is I plugged everything into the Tesla computer and just let it tell me where to go. And, and coming back really from New Brunswick to Quebec City from Fredericton is about is the same basically charging, uh, charge, supercharging stops there anyway. It was a repeat of, of the, the trip out. And then what, what we did change is I went from west of Quebec City to back to home in as little stops as I could do. And we did that in, you know, as you could see, in three stops. Uh, which So we went really, really uh, good um, at that time. Uh, in fact, in two stops, we went from the hotel to Montreal to Kingston and then home. So really, really uh, much more efficient use of the stops and the time. Now there, But there was a problem in Kingston, and that's why our time there is, is much longer because there were a one or two, there was at least one broken stall and another two that were on and off working. So not at all is rosy when it comes to Tesla superchargers either. However, again, we needed to uh, eat lunch. It was that time of day, so it took a little longer. So we went to get lunch, and that passed the time. But normally, the stops were going to be fairly quickly, done fairly quickly. So I wanted you to look at that, and also I wanted you to look at the average charge pull. Um, the average uh, charge, when I look at everything, was about uh, 72.42 kilowatts of, of power that I was able to pull. 
And that's, you know, that's not that fast. I mean, you have to remember, you might start at 140 or 150. None of these were version 3. They were all older stations. But then they'll taper down as you get closer to about 80. My, my limits were around 85, 80 to 85 percent, depending on, on how much more I could squeeze and if it was busy or not. If it wasn't busy, I'd stay another five minutes and top it to 85 kind of thing. So it's fast though, uh, and, and for Tesla again, it's a very uh, seamless experience where you just plug in and go. Uh, but hopefully this gives you some good information that really wasn't uh, an inconvenience. That's kind of what I want folks to get out of this video, this part of the video, is that even though we might have had to stop for like an hour, let's say, it worked out because we had to go eat and we had to do something, we had something to do. So it wasn't a big deal. Normally these stops would have been 20 minutes on average to be able to get where I'm going. And I know that Canada is slowly, um, Tesla is slowly uh, upgrading the supercharger suit to version 3s. The new ones going in are version 3s, but they're all slowly upgrading. That'll take some time. So even when that happens, it'll be even faster. But you know, you have to wait. It's getting busier here. These are all things that we hear coming from California and other hot spots that are start starting to happen here, even in southern Ontario and in, in southern Quebec. But the overall, um, again, takeaway from this is that it was a very pleasant experience for me. You know, I can't drive more than two or three hours without having to stop anyway for at least a good 20 minutes, half an hour to break and eat and all that stuff. Uh, you know, just stretch out. So it's not an inconvenience for me to have to uh, charge. And, you know, I was fortunate that I still had some free supercharger miles. So that's why the cost is zero because this, this entire trip cost me nothing in fuel costs. If I would have taken a gas car, which is something we considered to do on this trip, but I wanted to take the Model 3 because I got the long range for these kinds of trips. And I wanted to see what that experience is like. It was an effortless experience, I'll have to tell you. The car performed admirably. But again, we had no issues. We never came close to running out of power. I think the lowest I got on one journey was probably 19% or 20%, which is still, you know, like 90 kilometer range, roughly something like that. 80 kilometers, it's plenty of range. So I really never got nervous about it or had any range anxiety or anything like that. It was a truly good experience. So I hope this info was helpful to you. And if you have any questions, please send me an email. Um, my email is coming up, the contact information. I want to thank you for watching on YouTube. <laughs>